Working on the charged attack. Being able to hold down the sword button and then release it for a powerful blow. Um, so far, all I have is this triangle on the screen. Well, that's all you can see visually. Um, but actually, uh, the mechanics for the whole system are now in place. I've basically been refactoring this from Songbringer's source code um, over to this new Kitfu um, base. And uh, um, basically, yeah, this, um, let's take a look at some of this code. Really, there's really not much to show at all as far as the charge attack is really not working in the game yet. But, like I was just saying, the basic mechanics are there. Um, there's a really, uh, there is a lot of functions to how this all works because it's, uh, there's really a lot of different um, magic variables here. There's so many different timings. Um, I've kept all this kind of code for like whether you have the glove or the charge or the parry and all these things uh, because eventually I want to reuse this game engine to make Songbringer 2 um, when I've got all that story written and I've got that, you know, all, when I'm ready to do Songbringer 2, it's going to be really exciting because I already have this awesome thing called KitFu, which is just basically a game engine wrapper layer. And then uh, I'll be able to like plug in some different things and just use the same game code for this next game rather than having to kind of redo and refactor everything with KitFu. KitFu is pretty awesome. It makes things compile so much faster um, because of the minimal um, headers. So, anyways, um, there's look like check out how many magic variables there are here, right? Like whether you have the glove or um, things like that, or whether you're using the blink currently, things like uh, the attack delays, and um, whether you're going to immediately start charging, or whether you're going to do your attack, or whether you're going to unsheath your sword. There's so much stuff that has to be kind of commented out for now uh, until I can get those features in there, um, but. This is the basic mechanics for it. When you use the sword, you're basically, you um, immediately start charging it, and you also start the attack. And you also launch a ghost sword. And then it's got some other stuff to go into the charge stance and charge up the sword. So when you start charging the sword, all that is is basically just a delay until the charge attack is ready. That's really all it is. All The main important thing here, here is we're taking uh, the attack flags and setting the charged or parry charged, or uh, just the charging flag. Uh, and then once you let go of it, it actually does the it performs the charge attack, which deals damage as a wave. This is the part I haven't implemented yet, right here, where it does AOE damage. This is basically just creating a rectangle of damage, and then creating a bigger rectangle of damage, and then a bigger rectangle of damage over time, so that we get like sort of not really, not really a wave, but more of like a growing rectangle or growing block of damage. And um, all I have to do to basically get this work is just to implement this AOE damage function. Um, this is something curious. I'm not sure what to do about this because this is going to be a multiplayer game, and um, causing the tick to sleep was a, is a really, really neat way of providing some. Um, I would almost call it negative feedback. It's it's feedback that's not. It's, it's more like indirect feedback. It's feedback to the player that they don't really sense or don't really feel. It's subconscious. It's uh, subliminal. Um, you just sleep the tick for just a few milliseconds at a time, and it really feels better. It feels like your sword is connecting, right? But in a multiplayer game, I can't actually go and shut down the tick. I have to keep the, uh, the packets running in the background. I have to keep systems running. Um, and that means that I also might need to keep the render running in a certain way. So I'm not sure how to make the, uh, um, this work just yet. Maybe perhaps I'll like cause the player's animations to pause for a second and motion to pause for a second for just for that player and everything else moves around, but uh, I don't know if that'll feel the same. So anyways, that's not for today yet. Uh, but something I'm thinking of in the back of my mind, how to implement tick sleeping with multiplayer. So uh, that's basically it. That's the code. And uh, I've got a lot of um, simplification that I'm going to be doing. Um, one thing I learned from doing Songbringer was that sort of towards the beginning of Songbringer, I really um, I implemented the entity foo system where all entities have like an attack component, an input component, move component, position component, things like that. And um, I really got kind of disorganized throughout the process of writing all of like 140,000 lines in Songbringer. Um, all, like a lot of those things I got, uh, I was sort of new to creating entities. 
um, and, or in entity systems. And um, there's so much I need to do to make these more, uh, God, just easier to use. For example, one thing I was always doing was like starting, it's like in the input system, like when you use the sword, for example, it causes the player to, uh, like let's say you start using this, you swing the sword, and the input system is the thing that calls the render component and tells it to start an animation. Uh, but it's a lot smarter if you set some flags and then let the render system handle the animation key depending on whatever other uh, flags are, are at the same time. Because what happens with, with the input, when you, when you have one system trying to modify data in another system, things get super convoluted. It's like spaghetti code. For example, when, like, when we go back to that same example of uh, the sword swing, right? When you start the sword swing, you also have to stop the sword swing. Or, or there's some kinds of animations that should run forever. And so when do you stop them? If it's in the input system and you release a button and then it stops that animation from playing, what happens if you somehow miss that button release, which happened many times in Songbringer, right? What happens if your code doesn't perform or doesn't act exactly how you intended it to? Um, which, God forbid, that should ever happen, but it always does, right? So why not, why not plan your systems a little bit more organized, structure them so that you don't have as many bugs when it comes to uh, the polishing phase of the game, which can be hell, right? You don't want to spend months and months and months repolishing your game because of this bug and that bug and that bug. Why not structure things right from the get-go? So I'm trying to structure things better with this game and this game engine called KitFu or this game engine wrapper layer called KitFu so that I just don't have to... I don't have as many bugs when it comes to um, that time because it's structured better. So, yeah, that's that's where my thoughts are right now, what I'm working on. There's really not much to show from this so far. There's a lot of code in place, though, and there will be more stuff to show soon. So thanks for watching this video.